There are three airline alliances dominating commercial air travel – Star Alliance, One World and Sky Team. One interesting aspect of these groups is that all of their member airlines have aircraft that sport special alliance-wide liveries. These standard liveries promote the aircraft's respective alliance wherever it travels, making it a flying billboard of sorts. So when exactly did this become a thing? And what exactly are the requirements of each member airline? In this video, we explore this topic and try to answer these questions. Seeing as the Star Alliance began the whole concept of an airline alliance, it would be fitting that this firm also pioneered the alliance-wide standard livery. It was back on May 14, 1997 that the Star Alliance was officially launched. This initially began with five carriers as founding members – Air Canada, Lufthansa, SAS, Thai Airways International and United Airlines. It was only five years later that an alliance-wide livery would be unveiled. Prior to this group having a standard appearance for an alliance livery, some member carriers sported special alliance-themed liveries to at least celebrate their newfound collaboration. Two notable liveries were found on Boeing 767s. One operated by United Airlines, as you can see here, and another with an SAS aircraft, shown here. As you can see from the images, the tail featured the Star Alliance logo against a solid black background, while the aircraft's fuselage featured member airlines, with the first or most forward section belonging to the operating carrier. What do you think of these? Does the United's Battleship Grey section disrupt the harmony, or does it make for a nice and interesting quirk? It wasn't until November 2002 that an alliance-wide standard was announced. In a media statement, the organization stated that it had selected Korean carrier Asiana Airlines to become the first airline to, quote, showcase an airplane with the new Star Alliance promotional aircraft livery. This would take place only once Asiana joined, which was the following year, in 2003. You've likely already seen the Star Alliance livery flying around over the past 20 years, but in case you haven't, the look features the Star Alliance name painted in bold letters across a white fuselage, as well as the Alliance logo covering the full vertical stabilizer. The aircraft will serve as a flying billboard on Asiana's extensive route network, the media statement noted, adding that each airline is going to paint at least one aircraft with the new livery. Jan Albrecht, chief executive officer of Star Alliance 2002, also offered a comment saying, Member airlines promote the Star Alliance brand through a variety of channels, one of them being the aircraft exterior. Our promotional livery designs have been in circulation since the beginning of the Alliance. The expansion of our extensive network with the joining of new members gave us a great opportunity to look at a new promotional livery. The media statement also noted that the Star Alliance was the only airline alliance that consistently displayed a promotional aircraft livery, something that was, quote, highly visible at airports and in the air that would serve to build awareness of the Star Alliance. While the One World Airline Alliance would be founded about two years after the founding of the Star Alliance, it would announce its own standardized livery some seven years after the Star Alliance's 2002 unveiling. Indeed, it was in February 2009 that One World put out a statement that, quote, every airline in the alliance will decorate a proportion of its fleet in the One World livery. At the time, this would be a total of 40 aircraft and mainly types that fly on international routes. The standard alliance livery for One World would feature the alliance's name in large letters up to almost two meters tall and have the One World logo along the side of the fuselage against a white or polished metal background. The name of the operating airline is placed in smaller lettering in a standard position at the front of the aircraft below the One World name and logo. Unlike the Star Alliance standard, each carrier's One World livery would retain its own regular tail fin design. Perhaps feeling left out or left behind, the SkyTeam Alliance introduced its own standard livery in April 2009, quite shortly after the One World announcement. While traditionally known as April Fool's Day in many parts of the world, the SkyTeam unveiling on April 1st was no joke. 
Announced from Milan, Sky Team showed off its new Alliance livery with the arrival of Delta Airlines Flight DL74 from Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport at Milan's Malpensa Airport. According to reporting at the time from The Aviationist, this specific aircraft was a Boeing 767-400ER with registration November 844 Mike Hotel. While Delta was the first carrier to publicly display this new standard Sky Team livery, other member airlines were scheduled to unveil their own versions within the same year. These are the aircraft types as reported by The Aviationist. From Aeromexico, a Boeing 767-200. From Alitalia, a Boeing 767-300 in April 2009. Czech Airlines, an ATR-42. From Air France, a Boeing 777-300. From China Southern, a Boeing 777-200ER. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, a Boeing 777-300. From Aeroflot, an Airbus A330-200. And finally, for Korean Air, a SkyTeam livery would be applied to an Airbus A330-200 in October 2009. The Aviationist added that it takes an average of 10 days to customize the aircraft with the new SkyTeam livery and that each aircraft gets three layers of paint – the base, the color, and the finish. In the case of Delta Airlines and its Boeing 767-400ER, 265 liters of paint were required. This included 151.5 liters of silver color for the fuselage and 75.5 liters of gray for the wings, and 7.85 liters of dark blue paint for the large SkyTeam ribbon logo and SkyTeam wordmark. Like the Star Alliance, SkyTeam decided that its standard color scheme would feature the Alliance logo on the vertical stabilizer, regardless of airline. However, SkyTeam would trade a plain white fuselage for a silver body. Additionally, the livery would consist of a dark blue SkyTeam ribbon wrapped around the rear section of the fuselage, while the SkyTeam name features in large dark blue letters along the front side of the fuselage. As for uniquely identifying the airline, the name of the carrier is placed below the SkyTeam name on the front section of the aircraft fuselage. In the Alliance's announcement, it was also noted that all SkyTeam member airlines had committed to paint at least one aircraft with the new SkyTeam livery by the end of 2009. As far as we know, not much has changed about the liveries since they were unveiled in 2002 and 2009 respectively. Some airlines have left alliances while others have joined, but the alliance liveries remain the same. While things have mostly gone unchanged, one airline recently shook things up a little by essentially inverting the Star Alliance standard livery. Indeed, in August 2009, Alliance member Air New Zealand announced that one of its new Airbus A321neos would sport a one-of-a-kind look, a jet black Star Alliance livery hailed as the world's first black Star Alliance aircraft. Quoted in the announcement, Air New Zealand's Chief Transformation and Alliances Officer Mike Williams said, While Star Alliance livery is typically white with a black tail fin, we asked if we could do something a little different and inverse the colors in celebration of how important black is to Air New Zealand and New Zealand. Black is an iconic Kiwi color. From sports jerseys to gum boots, black is embedded in New Zealand's national identity and worn with pride, so it's fantastic to welcome this aircraft with its special black livery into our fleet. Clearly, the decision makers at Star Alliance let Air New Zealand have their way as the aircraft Zulu Kilo Oscar Yankee Bravo with MSN 11049 was delivered to the airline in November 2022. We were happy to agree, said Star Alliance Vice President for Alliance Development and Communications, Siu Ling Fok. We know the significance of the color black to New Zealanders. Ultimately, it appears that all three major alliances try to maintain tight control over respective alliance branding and impose different sets of requirements and restrictions on their member airlines. We know that each alliance requires all member airlines to have at least one aircraft in the respective standard alliance livery. As mentioned in the One World press statement, the goal was to have the livery applied on aircraft that flew mainly international services, but it's not publicly known what all the specific additional requirements might be. Discussing Star Alliance requirements, one contributor on an airliners.net forum had stated that there was, 
a PDF of the requirements floating around on the web a few years ago, and, based on memory, recalled that the rule was for 10% of each fleet type flying internationally to be in the Alliance livery. So we'll end this with a rather obvious question. Which Alliance livery is your favourite? And why exactly do you like it more than the others? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.